Hey guys, I'm Luke Huckaba. I'm a virtualization architect here at Rackspace. I'm going to be talking about how to properly plan out uh, DR with VMware Site Recovery Manager. Some of the biggest questions that you usually come across are, where do I start? That is probably the hardest question to ask, not only to ask, but to figure out. Where do you start? Um, first things first, what do you want to protect? Do you want to protect everything? No, you don't want to protect everything. You want to think about what's the major things that I have to have up in a disaster? What's going to keep my business going? In a disaster, you probably don't care about a little bitty inventory application worried about tracking your office chairs. That's not a big deal in a disaster. You got bigger things to worry about. Next thing, where would you want to have your failover go to? You could, if you have a data center right now, do you want to build a second data center? Do you want to leverage maybe a service provider like Rackspace or somebody else or some other colo provider? That's really kind of up to you. It's, all of this is up to you. I'm just giving you some recommendations. Let's get you started on this thing. So the next thing, when you're thinking about that data center, do you want to go active-active or do you want to go active-passive? There's benefits to both. Active-active is going to cost you more because you have to build out a mirror of each environment. Not only a mirror, but it has to be kind of double because if you lose data center A, you have to be able to run the capacity of data center A and data center B and data center B. So that gets kind of tricky. If you run active-passive, a lot of people accept the fact that in a disaster, there might be some degradation of performance. Um, main thing is you have to do a one-to-one -one on storage. I mean, that's kind of a given. If you don't have enough storage to bring it over, you can't bring it over, plain and simple. You might be able to go with maybe larger, slower disks and maybe some a smaller overall frame, but same total capacity to help you know, drive down costs a little bit. Maybe some of your compute resources might be a little less. All of that will help you save money. Um, and you can still fell over, it'll still work. SRM doesn't care, you just tell it, okay, when I fell over, use this resource. I see it a lot of times where people have like a five node cluster and they'll fell to a three node cluster knowing there might be some over provisioning and they're okay with that because their stuff's still up. So, next thing, things to consider. This is kind of an interesting thing here because you have to think about Active Directory, you have to think about SQL, you have to think about networking. Active Directory, Microsoft doesn't really support them running on SRM. You really want to leverage its built-in replication, its built-in DR, it does great. You want to make sure though that you have a global catalog server at each site, that's a major thing. And you know, your bridge heads should probably be global catalogs anyway, but that's up to you. SQL Server, again, you want to, that's one that has its own native replication that you definitely want to leverage. In the event of a failover and your, your database comes up crash consistent and it starts getting you know, corrupted data, that's a bad thing. Let it do log shipping and you'll be a lot better off that way. Networking is another big thing. You could span your VLAN so when your VMs fell over that they land in a subnet that's exactly the same or you can leverage SRM's IP changing functionality, which they have that DRIP customization tool. Thing works great. You can export your list of VMs into a CSV, edit them, and then re-import it back in. It works great. It's an awesome tool. Uh, you can also do one by one within um, SRM, within your recovery plan. You can change them manually there. The biggest piece of the puzzle right now is gonna be this one right here, information gathering. If you don't get good information, you're not gonna get a good DR plan. You need to kind of go through an exercise that might take you like a year. Bring every stakeholder in for each application into a room, cover how many servers they have, what versions of OS, what versions of application, how much RAM, how many CPUs, how much storage. Take a look at their, their, their storage, uh, if, if they're dedicated servers and you want to do a P to V, look at their integrations. You want to check everything that that server talks to or that application talks to. You want to map out its external traffic through firewalls, internal traffic. Make sure you even, you even want to maybe check the cable runs that are going to a specific server because you just don't know how it's going to play. You want to make sure that you have the best complete overview or knowledge of your entire environment. In this information gathering, you want to do a couple things. Build some good design docs. These design docs can house all connectivity, storage, wired, Ethernet, whatever, it doesn't matter, NFS, you want to see every single thing that goes in and out of one of your applications and, and make sure you keep track of that in the design doc. If something changes, make sure that design doc changes. Last, you want to make sure that you have a good test plan. While you're going through this information gathering, 
you're gonna wanna kinda tier your apps. AD, SQL. AD specifically is probably gonna be a tier zero app. That's one that you want up first. SQL, any form of database, you probably want up second because it's gonna have to be online before your applications come online. So this is in your, all, all your information gathering. I mean, it's just good information in is gonna be a good DR plan. Now, where do we go from here? can't tell you right now. You have to tune in for my next video where we're going to be actually architecting this and that one's going to be a fun one. So make sure you follow me on Twitter at Tap Huck and I'll see you at the upcoming VMUGS I'm going to be speaking at. Hit me up guys.